So now that we've seen one dimensions extended into two dimensions, let's again extend two dimensions into three dimensions. We've done this before in previous videos, but now I think it's time to actually understand what's going on here with the quote unquote big scary word homogeneous coordinates. All right, now instead of having Bill and Ted, we have Billy, Bobby, Suey, Betsy. It doesn't really matter. It's people, and they exist in a two dimensional space. They cannot. Uh, they, they have no conceptualization or of the geometrics of three dimensions. They were born into two dimensions. They definitely can understand one dimensions. They can understand two dimensions because that's all they've known their entire life. But they have no idea what three dimensions are. And you can see here I've kind of blotched out this third dimension for now. Uh, well, we'll pull it up here very quickly. Anyway, so I'm going to, the names are irrelevant. The positions are represented by these vectors. And they exist out here and it just so happens that, again, this is our house. If we connect their positions like so, we have our house-looking shape, which is quite nice. Now, again, they like to maintain this house-looking shape in two dimensions. So if one of them moves, the rest of them have to move. So, uh, for example, this vector, say they want to all move to the right one, then this vector would turn into that. This vector, this long one there, would turn into that. I can't draw straight. This vector would turn into that. Uh, this vector would go like so, and this vector would point straight down. And again, if I if I connect the dots, we have our nice house shape, and they're all happy because they're still making a house. Well, we have the same problem in two dimensions. If we want to move them all together, say let's take this vector and this vector. We, we, we could do all five of them, but I think I can illustrate this just fine with two of them. If this vector wants to move right one... All right, what uh, what transformation are we going to have to hit it with? And let me explain again what this is, even though we've seen it in previous videos. It doesn't hurt to explain it again. We're taking this transformation matrix, hitting this vector with it here, and then out comes the result vector right here. And again, transformation matrix, let's say we apply it to this vector, we get that vector. We apply it to this vector, and then we get this result vector, and then we hit the, this vector with our transformation matrix, so on and so forth, one by one. And then I actually went to the effort of diagramming or drawing or rendering the vectors so we can get an idea what this means geometrically uh, down here in the graph at the bottom of the screen. Let me erase all this, clear this up a little bit. And I guess the third dimension's hiding behind the black. But I don't want to think in, oops, I don't want to think in 3D quite yet. I want to think in. 2D. Okay, is that enough? Whew. All right. So if they all want to move to the right one, the, remember the goal is to hit them all with the same transformation. So what transformation am I going to have to hit this vector? I'll label it A. What transformation am I going to have to hit to move it out to here? Well, A's current location is 1, 1. I'll use vector notation here. And to move it out here, that's resulting, its prime location, a resulting location, will be 2, 1. Alright, and so it looks like uh, we're dealing with this vector right now, this 1, 1, 1, 1. So, so if I change this value to a 2, like so, then it's going to be 1 times our x basis vector plus 1 times our y basis vector. So basically the transformation matrix to move this ve vector out to here in 2D would be 2, 0, 0, 1, and I'll just draw that down here, like so. Now, let's compare this vector. This vector, which I'll label B, okay, I'll label this A's transformation matrix. Um, this vector B, well, in order to move him over 1, it's going to be like that. Well, what's his current X position? Notice we're not really fiddling with the Y's. What's his current X position? Well, it's negative 1. All right, so the transformation matrix we're going to have to hit him with to move him over to the the zero location. Well, that's going to have to be zero, zero, and then zero, one. We want to maintain its y position. Okay, but the but the x we had to zero out. Now notice this is B's transformation matrix. These two transformation matrix matrices are not equal. They are not the same transformation. And this is the problem we had with Bill and Ted in the one-dimensional spaces. We wanted to hit them with the same transformation, but but same problem here. We want to hit them with the same transformation. Watch what happens if I actually 
grab this value here, this slider, and let's do zero or two. Let's choose two. We'll do A's transformation. Watch what happens. Watch what happens to both vector A and vector B. Vector A, all right, our goal with vector A is to get it pointing here, and vector A, sure enough, it will point out there, but what happens with vector B as I, as I change this transformation matrix? Well, you see vector B is getting further and further away from where we want to be. All right. So, but again, if if B says, well, let's use my transformation matrix and let's change this down to a zero. Well, yeah, vector B. You can see vector B here. He's going to become a zero. He's going to point straight up like we wanted. But then, look at that. We just collapsed. The x the x direction is gone. All right. Not ideal. We want to use the same transformation matrices for both vectors. In fact, all five vectors. We have uh, five vectors in our example here. I want to use the same transformation matrix on all these vectors uh, to do the translation or the affine transformation, such a big word, to, to basically move this house over to the right one. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, the same way we did from 1D going into 2D, now we're going to go from 2D into 3D. All right, we have three basis vectors here. And again, Billy, Bobby, Sue, Ted, whoever these people are, they have no idea physically or geometrically what this third basis vector is. Okay, they don't know what it means or is or feels like to exist and live in and move around in a three-dimensional world. But they can accept the fact that, yes, the math works, and they will walk by faith and accept that this third dimension exists, and it exists for their benefit, and we can use that to move them around. So no surprises here. We've... We've seen this in previous videos, but now I'm just going to grab this one, this x component of our third basis vector, or the, the first element of our third basis vector, and I'm going to bump it up to a one, and again, it feels like I'm adding one, but really I'm kind of adding one to all these vectors in this third direction, which is not being graphed, nor exists, nor do these people understand. Now again, let's go to 3D, and holy smokes, let's... uh. We, we, we know what the third dimension is. We, we know physically what it means, and I can fly around this like I've done in previous videos, and we can see that third basis vector, sure enough, moving there. Now, now is this Z? Well, you can call it Z, but if you're really being pure about homogeneous coordinates, it's W. All right, and if you remember, we did the W equals one line for Bill and Ted in that, in that two-dimensional space. We have that W equals one line. Well, with... Uh, with going two dimensions to three dimensions, if I can get this to move, where 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 do all of our points live at? Well, they live at the the w equals one plane. Now it's not a line; it's two dimensions, right? It's it's the w equals one plane. So notice all of their z components are set to one, right? And when we hit them with this transformation matrix, the resulting z components still leave them in that w equals one plane. And then if I hit side here, I've changed this up a little bit, so you can see that that we are perfectly aligned right now with the W equals 1 plane. Boy, that didn't go over as well as I wanted it to. Let's try this again. This W equals 1 plane. That's probably as close as I'm going to get. And as I move these around, sure enough, it stays in that W equals 1. All five of these, they remain in that W equals 1 uh, plane, okay, but using this third coordinate, which they don't understand physically what it means, but they're happy that the math still works, they move around just fine, okay, but yet they stay in that W equals 1 plane. Now, in future videos, I'm going to show you what happens if somebody wants to apostatize and move out of that W equals 1 plane. What does that mean? And I'll talk about that in a future video, but for now, let's just stick with that W equals 1 plane, and there you go. Now, now, if, if you search or Google for homogeneous coordinates, let me pull up a picture here. You'll see a diagram very similar to this one. There's several of them. You know, here's the URL of this image. Give them credit for doing it. But you'll see this this W equals 1 plane, and we have X, Y, and, and W, and you just scratch your head. You're like, oh, and then a point out here is a line, and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, ah, information overload. I can't handle it. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. All right? We're just using this extra third dimension. Okay, this extra third dimension that the people that live in that dimension don't really understand. 
All right, but we're using this. Look at that. We still have our house. Isn't that nice? Our house. Anyway, we're using that extra third dimension to move them around. And even though geometrically and physically they don't understand what it means to move around in a three-dimensional world, it still works. The math's great, and they're happy with it. So on and so forth. So there we go. We've just extended 2D to 3D, and I bet you can't guess what we're going to do in the next video. <laughs> we're going to extend 3D into 4D. And at that point, you and me, us, the people that were the gods of the first dimension, uh, we don't have any idea what it means to move around in four-dimensional space. Physically, what is it? What What is four-dimensional? It's not time. It's definitely not time. So what is this fourth-dimensional space? We can't understand it, nor can we see it, nor conceptualize it. However, we can still use the math to our advantage so that we can translate or move us all together, move our vertices all together in three-dimensional space, and we can just accept that, that the math works and we're happy with it.